We all know that self-custody is the pinnacle of financial sovereignty, but with that power comes a lot of responsibility, not the least of which is the storage and security of your seed and passphrase that guards your precious savings. The most secure way to do that is to keep your secrets offline in a hardware wallet. Today we're diving into something really unique in the crypto hardware space called Sato Chip. So if you are looking for an affordable, open source hardware wallet that is different than the usual suspects, stick around. We're going to cover everything from features to setup and even sending some Bitcoin. And I'll give you my honest thoughts on this wallet and who I think this wallet is perfect for. While this wallet supports over a thousand different cryptocurrencies and tokens, this video is going to be Bitcoin centric, but those same principles apply to the whole lot of cryptocurrencies. Let's dive in. So what is the Sato Chip cryptocurrency hardware wallet? Well, this is a Sato Chip hardware wallet. It's a crypto hardware wallet in a credit card size form factor. Unlike traditional hardware wallets like the Ledger or the Trezor, it uses proven smart card technology. Like I said, the Sato Chip is a smart card hardware wallet. The firmware on the Sato Chip is for signing purposes only. It's not a fancy wallet. It stores your keys securely on the chip, but it also signs transactions and that's it. The Sato chip card is completely open source. That is the software is open source and the hardware is open source. In fact, they have instructions on their GitHub page and their website on how you can make your own Sato chip device at home using a blank smart card. And this credit card size device uses standard smart card readers that are available all around the world. The Sato chip was developed by a small team based in Brussels, Belgium, and has been around since 2015. And this team is focused on simplicity and security. Like the title says, this wallet is affordable. It's a 25 euro investment, maybe some shipping's involved. Also, you can pay with crypto on their website, and I'll show you that in a minute. And this company has two other products, and I'll review those in future videos. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Sato chip in more detail. So this is the Sato chip smart card hardware wallet, and that's it. It's exactly the size of a credit card because it's a standard credit card device. Basically, it has a secure element chip in the card that is hacker proof. That is the keys that are stored on the chip cannot be removed even if you do a physical attack on the device. The security chip is EAL6 plus certified which is one of the highest levels of security you can get. And it's the same technology used in credit cards, government-issued IDs, electronic passports, and SIM cards. The Sato chip card has a special pin protection system where the pin, of course, a lot of hardware wallets require a pin to unlock the device. This one does as well. But if you enter the wrong pin more than four times, it locks the card and shuts everything down and the card is not usable after that. All the code that went into the applet that runs on this card is available online at their GitHub page and all the code for the software they use to access a device is also on their GitHub page. Some of the technical features of the Sato chip include it is BIP32, BIP39, and BIP44 compatible, which means it has support for hierarchical, tough word to say, deterministic wallets which means it can generate and manage multiple addresses. Like I mentioned, the Sato chip supports over a thousand different cryptocurrencies, but this video, we're going to focus on Bitcoin. The Sato chip is compatible with a multitude of different software applications, but they don't have a specific software application that they wrote to access the device, sort of like Tangent, but they don't have that type of thing. What you do is you use third-party software to access the device. For instance, for Bitcoin, you can use the Electrum wallet, and they have a special proprietary version of the Electrum wallet that you need to download from their site to use. Or you can use the regular Sparrow wallet, which recognizes this card right out of the box. And those are for Bitcoin. Now, if you want to use Bitcoin Cash, and I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, you have to use a special wallet called Electron Cash. I'm not familiar with it. And if you want to use EVM compatible assets, you need to use a special wallet called Uniblow. And with that, or after you set up your Uniblow account, you can then use the Rabi wallet, which is a very popular web-based wallet. And they also have another proprietary fork of the Electrum wallet application for use with Litecoin. 
And again, not sure why you're into a Litecoin. It doesn't have any batteries. It doesn't need to be charged ever. And because it's a standard ISO 7816 card, it fits into your regular wallet and is the exact same size of a regular credit card. So let's go ahead and take a look at the website. And then after that, we'll get into the demo. Before we get to the website, I want to make a quick trip over here to their GitHub page. On this page, you can find the overview here. And I want to show you, this is the Sato chip applet. That is the software that runs on the chip on the card itself. That's all open source. This is a Sato chip bridge, which is for something else. This is where you can download the Electrum version. You can also do it from their website. They have a 2FA application available here. I'll talk about that later. And I brought you here because I wanted to show you one thing real quick. If I go into this applet description here, right here, it says Sato chip stands for secure, anonymous, trustless, and open chip. So if you're wondering where that Sato chip came from, this is it. Let's go ahead and head to the website. Here we are at satochip.io. This is their homepage. And I'm just going to run through a couple things on the website that are interesting. Uh, you can take your time and poke around on the website. These are their three products, the Sato chip, which is what we're looking at today, Sato Dime, which I have and I will show in a different video, and do not have the Sat Seed Keeper yet, but I'm going to order that. It's actually in the cart right here. Let's see what else they have. This is a link to download the applications that you need to access the device. And they have a learning area, which I've been through, and it answers a lot of questions, and it's a good way to get up to speed with this uh, wallet really quickly some q a right here and what else oh just some uh more information on the sato chip what coins that they support over a thousand different coins and the sato dime as well so in the products menu here at the top we can see that they have these three products some accessories which include a card reader now this device this wallet this hardware wallet is a credit card with, which has a smart chip inside, but you can use it using NFC technology. It's NFC capable, or you can use it with a smart card reader, which is what this is right here. And that's what I have right here. And I got that off of Amazon right here. This is the exact smart card reader that I have. It works plug and play on Mac. I'm assuming it also works plug and play on Windows. And I'm not sure about Linux, not much works plug and play on Linux. Anyway, it, it's $16, pretty cheap. And then you have it forever, hopefully. But it is a pain in the butt to have to use something like that. And the you can get an NFC card reader. So, so you just tap it rather than inserting it. But they're a little more expensive and I just didn't want to deal with it. And I know this one works. I'll leave a link in the description below for the reader that I have. Okay, that's it for accessories and applications. So on this page here, this is the Sato chip download section where you have a link to download the Sparrow wallet. This is just a regular Sparrow wallet. You have a link to download the Electrum client that is proprietary. It's their fork of Electrum and it's the only one that works with the Sato chip. You cannot use the regular Electrum wallet. You can use the regular Sparrow wallet. You don't have to download it from here. Um, but the Electrum wallet, you have to download their version. To use Ethereum, you have to download a different wallet called Uniblow and Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. Again, I'm not super excited about needing five different wallets to manage my crypto, but I'm a Bitcoin enthusiast. I'm not a maxi. And so most of my savings are in Bitcoin. So I just manage this with the Sparrow wallet, which is why today's video is going to be about Bitcoin. And down here, there's more downloads for Sato Dime and other things. So once you have downloaded the appropriate software, there's one other little piece of software we need to access all the functionality of the Sato chip card. And that is a utility application. It is satochip.io forward slash satochip dash utils. And they're utility software. It's little tiny applications that allow you to do special functions with your satochip wallet, including factory resetting, setting it, changing the pin, and checking authenticity. So what you do is scroll down and download the appropriate version and install it on your platform. And one last thing, here in the getting started menu, they have quick start guides for each of their products which are a really neat way and easy way to get started. And if you need assistance, they have quick start guides here, facts, 
And I believe, no, it's not here. They have an academy, which is more of a longer version of the Q&A. It's more like blog posts uh, about their products. So you can go through there and it's a great way to get started up the learning curve of their wallet. Okay, let's get to the demo. What you're going to need is the Sato Chip Smart Card Hardware Wallet. You're going to need a compatible smart card reader, any modern computer, whether it be Linux, Mac, or PC. You're gonna need an appropriate wallet installed for our purposes, we're gonna use a Sparrow, and we're also going to install, download and install the Sato Chip Utility application. Let's get to the demo, finally. Okay, here we are at Sparrow Wallet. This is the opening screen to Sparrow Wallet, and down here in the corner, it has a little yellow switch, which should be green when you're connected to your own node, but I can't plug all these things into my computer, so I'm going to have to use the public node, which freaks me out, but that's okay, just for demo purposes. The card is clean and never been used, so I'm going to place it into the reader, and then we're going to select New Wallet. We're gonna call this Sato Chip, that's easy. And then this screen comes up, and what we want to do is to create our first Sato Chip wallet for Bitcoin only on the Sparrow wallet is select Connected Hardware Wallet, and then we want to scan, and there it is, Sato Chip leave card on reader. So it recognizes it right away. And we want to import the key store, but we have to set a pin code first. So it says choose a pin code now. So I'm going to set a pin code here and press import key store. I have to re-enter the pin code and initialize. And then I can do one of two things. Either I can import a seed phrase that I have from somewhere else and restore it to the Sato chip card, or I can let Sparrow Wallet generate a seed phrase for me. I am connected to the internet and yes, this is a hot wallet on a cold wallet device or a hot wallet generation of keys for a cold wallet device, which might not make sense to you or me, but this wallet does not have the capability of generating its own keys. And if it did, it can't display them because it doesn't have a screen. So we have to generate the keys on a potentially insecure environment like a computer. In order to mitigate that, you can use a fresh install you can use Tails Linux and start from a USB, or you can disconnect the Wi-Fi if that makes you feel any more secure. For this demo, I'm going to let Sparrow Wallet generate some new keys, and you'll notice there is no option for a passphrase. You cannot use a passphrase if you're going to set up the card with the Sparrow Wallet. If you use Electrum, at least their proprietary version, yes, you can use a passphrase. And if you use their utility application, yes, you can set it up with a passphrase. And that's it. So now I'm, now I'm going to import the key store and now we're done. Basically, it's a press apply, set a password for the application, and that's it. Sato chip is officially initialized and set up and ready to receive Bitcoin. Go over here to the left and select receive. There's the address. Please send all your Bitcoin to that address and then I won't have to make these videos anymore. Now, if you want to use Taproot, this is Taproot compatible. So what you need to do is you would go up here to native SegWit, select Taproot, have to go through the process again, clear the key store, select connected hardware wallet, scan, import key store, enter the previous code, not a new one. See, it says enter pin code, not select pin code. Press import and apply. And if you want to back up the SegWit wallet, you could name it SegWit or whatever you want to do. I'm not going to back it up and I'm going to set a password and that's it. That's how you create a Taproot Sato chip hardware wallet. Okay, now I want to reset the wallet and show you how to use it on Electrum. And while I'm resetting it, I need to show you the Sato Chip Utilities application, which we downloaded and installed earlier. Let's head over there now. Okay, here we are at the Sato Chip Utils application. And yes, this is as big as it gets. It's not very big, and I'll zoom the camera in a little bit. But this is really faint. Now, I don't know if you noticed on, on the website, there's some things that make the product feel like it's just not finished all the way. And I realized that the Sato Chip team is a very small team and they're working very hard on this product, but there's some things that could really go a long way if they finish them to making people feel a little more comfortable with the product or at least the security of the product because you can't even read this and the Windows version is exactly the same. It's very difficult to read. So I'm going to insert the card into the reader 
and the screen changes. And what I need to do is reset my card. So I'm going to click that. I have no idea what that says, but I'm going to press start. And then it says remove the card. So I'm going to remove the card a little bit and then reinsert it back in and then press reset, remove the card, insert the card, press reset, remove the card, insert the card, reset. And I don't know if you'll notice, but the, this is a countdown. It's very hard to see. And it says two of four, remove card, insert card, reset. Now it says one of four, remove card, insert card, reset, done. The card has been reset. You press OK. The application restarts and you press let's go. Now the card is clean. It does not have a pin. It does not have a seed, passphrase, or anything. You can use this application to do all of that, or you can use the Electrum application. Actually, I'm going to use this one and show you how it works. So let's go ahead and set up, select this application, or this selection, set up my card. <laughs> Again, the instructions are in a very light font, and it's just kind of silly. Anyway, let's go ahead and enter a new pin. We're going to save the pin, and that's it. Now the pin unlocks access to the secure element chip on the card. And it also opens up some different menu selections. We need to set up our seed phrase. So I'm going to press set up seed. I don't know what that says. I already have a seed phrase or want to generate a new seed phrase, it says. So if you already have one and you want to restore it to your SATO chip, you can do it here. Just paste it into here or type it into here. And if you have a passphrase, you select this and you can enter a passphrase. Very good. I like the fact that they can use, you can use a passphrase on this wallet. Or if you want the application to generate a seed phrase for you, you select this and here's the 12 word seed phrase or 24 word. And again, you can use a passphrase, but there's no way to put in a passphrase. I'm clicking down here and nothing's happening. What you have to do, and this is kind of silly, is you uncheck and recheck. And now you have the opportunity to enter a passphrase. Okay, so that took me a little bit to figure out. I'm going to go with a very secure passphrase, passphrase and this 24 word seed phrase. And I'm going to finish setting up this card on this application just by pressing import. And then I'm going to take it back over to Sparrow Wallet and I'm going to send some Bitcoin to it. I'm going to do this all behind the scenes. And then I'll meet you over there with the wallet set up on Sparrow Wallet that has Bitcoin in it, and we're gonna send the Bitcoin out of the wallet, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, here we are at Sparrow Wallet inside the demo wallet that I set up for this demonstration, and I'm going to send some Bitcoin out of the wallet. There's already some Bitcoin in the wallet. Let's go ahead and look at the transactions. There are 66,000 sats in this wallet, which amounts to $45. I'm going to send it out of the wallet and show you how the transaction is approved using the Sato chip card. Okay, let's go ahead and send it to ourselves. Let's see what the fees are. Pretty good. And I'm going to copy this address. This is a receive address, and I'm going to put it into the send box along with a label to sell. I'm going to send the max, and the fee is going to be 2.99 sats per V-byte, which is nice and low, 22 cents. Not bad. We're going to create the transaction. And again, the Sato chip card is not inserted into the reader. That's why the light is orange when it's inserted. The light turns green, but I'm going to keep it out of the reader for the moment. I'm going to create the transaction. I'm going to finalize the transaction for signing. And then I'm going to sign. It says connect hardware wallet. I'm going to insert the Sato chip into the reader so the light turns green. I'm going to scan. It says Sato chip, leave card on reader. I'm going to sign the transaction. I need to insert the pin code, so I'm going to paste that in here. There it is. And I'm going to sign the transaction. Once it's been signed, it's sent back to Sparrow Wallet for broadcasting out onto the blockchain. And that's it. Let's go ahead and look at the transaction list in the Sparrow Wallet. Let's see if that transaction has been sent. And it has. Here it is. The transaction has been sent to self course it doesn't have any confirmations and might not for a little while and that's it pretty simple so this hardware wallet acts as a transaction signer and it stores the private keys and seed phrase on, and passphrase on the device let's head over to mempool.space and check the status of that transaction holy mackerel the transaction is already confirmed 52 seconds after i submitted it for confirmation it got confirmed <laughs> that never happens to me so we are having a great lucky day. Let's go back to the Sparrow Wallet and see what it looks like. Okay, and for some reason, 
It's not showing any confirmations on this wallet here, but I'm sure it will show up very soon. Oh, it says disconnected. Toggle the switch to reconnect. And there it is. The transaction is now showing that it has been confirmed. For some reason, we got kicked off of the network, but we're back on. And that is a demo transaction using the Sato chip. So let's go through a list of the pros and the cons, and then I'll get to my recommendation. Some of the pros include affordability. This wallet is really cheap. It's listed on their website for 25 euro. And I there are there is no other hardware wallet that I found on the market that is this inexpensive with a focus as much on security as they have. They're doing the best they can with the limited capabilities of this little credit card device. I love the fact that the Sato chip is fully open source, both the hardware and the software. They use proven smart card security with an EAL6 Plus certified secure element chip. The Sato chip offers NFC support and functions in a ton of different smart card reading devices. The Sato chip has Taproot support and multi-sig support that some other wallets, Tandem, don't have. It also works with a full Bitcoin node through the Electrum app or the Sparrow app and includes advanced fee and coin control, obviously through the use of those apps. In addition, you have the ability to reset the device and use it over and over as many times as you wish and you can have as many wallets as you want on the same device. Not at the same time, one at a time, but you can reset it, restore a different wallet to it, check that, make transactions, reset it, restore a different wallet to it, etc., etc., over and over and over. It has 12 or 24 word seed support, including passphrase support, and all of that, and it fits in your regular wallet. There are no battery concerns, no charging concerns. It's durable, waterproof, and dustproof. And lastly, it has really robust pin brute force protection. That is, you can enter a pin from 4 to 16 characters. I would suggest a really long one. And those characters can be alphanumeric. That is, they can be numbers, letters, symbols, and special characters. And if someone tries to break into your wallet and unlock the secure element chip by entering a pin, and they put the wrong one into the application for more than four times, the card shuts down. But... The Sato chip does have some cons. The main con is it doesn't have a screen, so it can't securely generate a seed phrase and show it to you on the card. It has to use a potentially vulnerable or insecure environment like a laptop to generate the seed phrase, and therefore it offers a little bit of vulnerability to attack. Also, a screen would allow you to verify a transaction on the device before you go ahead and sign the transaction and approve it. Because it doesn't have a screen, this is what's called a blind signer, sort of like the Tangem wallet. They're both blind signers. Now, Sato Chip has done something really unique in that regard. Because they know blind signing is not ideal, they developed an application, but it's for Android only. And what it does, it allows you to confirm the, tr the details of a transaction before you send it to the Sato Chip and confirm and sign the transaction. So if you are an Android user, there is a workaround for the blind signing problem. And it's, in fact, it's not a blind signer at that point. But for iOS users, it's a blind signer at the moment. Another con is it requires one of these to work. Now it is NFC capable, but there is no mobile app associated with the card because then it would just be like Tangem. Another con is, which I mentioned, is the seed phrase is generated in a potentially insecure environment. A workaround for that is to make a fresh install on your computer, boot off of a USB-based operating system, or you can even use one of their other products called the Seed Keeper that can generate a seed and transfer the seed to the Sato chip securely offline. That's for another video. Another con is the Sato chip does have limited software wallet support at the moment. And juggling multiple wallet applications up to five different wallet applications on your computer just to manage the cryptocurrency in this hardware wallet is a little frustrating. Also, the setup could be a little technical for some really new users. Additionally, the website and the applications have some grammatical and spelling errors that might raise some credibility concerns for some users. Now keep in mind, Bastian, one of the founders of Satochip, and his team are based in Brussels, Belgium. So their first language is French. Oui, oui, monsieur. 
And that's why I think some of the phrases and sentences on the website are a little wonky in English. And I mentioned there's no mobile application, but there is a workaround for that. You can simply export the XPUB from the Sparrow wallet, and this is for Bitcoin, into a blue wallet on your mobile device. And then you can have a mobile application where you can monitor the balance and receive Bitcoin. You cannot send Bitcoin out of the blue wallet because it doesn't have the keys that are stuck here in the card. Now, you could, of course, send the seed to the blue wallet, but then you're just using it as a hot wallet and you don't need this. In fact, I did that myself. Here is the blue wallet application with the, the current balance of the Sparrow wallet on my phone for me to see while I'm on the go. And it can be set up in USD, SAT, BTC, or SATs. So that's pretty cool. It's kind of a workaround. And finally, my recommendation. Based on my limited experience with this product, I really like it. I like their ethos. They are really price conscious and security conscious. And you don't see that very often. Usually, if something is really secure, the price is really high. I love their focus. I think they're working on an iOS 2FA application that will eliminate the blind signing problem. And I don't mind having this little card reader sitting around. And if you're not moving around the world like I am, you have an office or a place set aside where the card reader just sits. It's not terribly inconvenient. And they're cheap. Who do I think the Sato chip is good for? I think it's a great product for budget conscious Bitcoiners and people who are into cryptocurrency, not just Bitcoiners. I also think open source enthusiasts would be interested in this product because using it helps support other open source projects. And I think it would be really kind of cool to try to make one of these at home using their instructions and their applications available on their GitHub page. I also think it's great for those people who want a backup hardware wallet if they have a Ledger, a Trezor, a Blockstream Jade, or Keystone Pro or something a little more robust. I think users should be a pretty comfortable with self-custody by the time they get into one of these. And overall, I think it's good for a smaller amount of savings. I don't think it's quite ready for a, a large amount of crypto, like a life savings on this card. Not quite yet. At least I don't feel comfortable with it. However, if you need quick access and you're a frequent trader or you want the simplest possible solution and a built-in screen is a must-have, then you're going to need to look somewhere else. Overall, the Sato chip offers a really unique approach to a cryptocurrency hardware wallet at a crazy affordable price. While it may not be for everyone, it's a solid choice if you value open source technology and don't mind a little more technical setup process. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the Sato chip or any hardware wallet at all. I'll do my best to answer you. And please hit the subscribe button. It's free and you can unsubscribe anytime you want. Don't forget to hit the like and the notification bell and I will see you in the next video.